Hi, it's Emily or Emmy Rose 22A <clears throat> and I am back with episode two of the Crafty Accountability Podcast. Um, I don't know that I fully or properly introduced myself last time. Like, I mean, I said I'm Emily, which I obviously am, but um, I'm coming to you from Leighton, Utah. Um, it's actually a cloudy, rainy day, which is very unusual for us this early in February. Today is Saturday, February 2nd, 2019. Um, and I am on Instagram and Ravelry as Emmy Rose 22 a as well. So you can find me there. Now that I think I've done a little better on the administration front, um, I over set my goals a little bit last week, which is fine. That's partly what this is about is, you know, figuring out what I can do in a week and getting that done. I'm accountable. I just didn't quite make it. So um, let's start with some finished objects. From my yarny goodness is what we'll start with finished objects. First up, because this is kind of my pride and joy at the moment at least, is my beeswax hat. Oh, I need to clip that end. It's woven in. I just left it. I cut them after I block and I forgot to clip it before I pulled it out. So but oh, the stitch definition on this, the speckles of the yarn is gorgeous. And I got one of my favorite parts about this hat is it's hard to show you the crown increase or decreases are beautiful. Let me pop it on for you because I haven't done proper finished object pictures yet because I like a nice warm cover my ears kind of hat, not a I don't know how much you guys can actually see because I can't see but oh I love it I think it fits great I love the feel of it it's fairly loose but that's okay um, <clears throat> it's good for me like I said I am thrilled with the way it came out it was so fun to work up it did take me most of the week that's what I spent most of my time on this week was my beeswax hat um, but I just can't say enough good things about the yarn which is um, Stranded, Dye Way Stranded Dye Works Merino Erin in her paint box one of a kind 128 colorway. And like I said, I just, I love, I wanted a beeswaxy color yarn for it. And when I saw this one, I just knew it would be what I wanted and it absolutely is. Um, I'm gonna leave a link. These are um, two stitch cables. And I followed a video by Andrea Mowry on how to do the um, the two stitch cables without a cable needle and that I'm sure sped things up a ton. I struggled a little bit with the just the very first rounds where I was trying to figure it out but last time I had just started the transition um, and I finished the rest of it this week which for me is really really good. Um, I had it done on Wednesday so um, I totally like made the, I knit this, I wanted to complete this on time for the uh, Blame Dunder knit along. And I did, I got it entered and everything. So um, now I participated in the knit along, completed something, and I have a beautiful finished object, which I am thrilled with. And this was on my make nine. So January, and I've already got one of my nine done. So yay for that. Um, let's keep going on that mojo. Uh, my that's probably not the best place to put that because I probably just shook the camera. Um, my next finished object, which is fully finished as well, is my Acromantula Colony hat by Christy Hofton. Oh. There's, there's some spidery goodness. Acromantula goodness. And the lace blocked out really pretty. It's a really, you kind of have these yarn's really dark. There's kind of twisted cables and then lace. And this one is much more um, slouchy, which is fine. I think my niece will, that's a cute look, isn't it? I think my niece will really like it. It's hooking on my earrings over there. So it's kind of fun. You have the spider bobbles sticking out. And see, it's a slouchy. I've got quite a bit of slouch back here, which I don't know. I don't know if I'm the best like hat wearer 
stylist, whatever, because I work to wear hats for warmth, not for... I've never really been a, like, wear a beanie inside all day kind of gal, but my niece absolutely is, and I think she's gonna love it. This color is perfect for her. I love the acromantulas. Um, I just think it turned out really nice. It's got some fairly pretty... Man, it's hard to see in there. <laughs> in this color, of course, but the nice crown decreases. But this is fully finished, um, so I will be gifting this to her probably maybe next week. I'm not sure when I'll see her. Um, but next time I see her, she'll be getting her new hat. And I'm I'm thrilled that I have that uh, fu fully finished and ready to give her. And that was knit out of uh, Barocco Vintage in the colorway Charcoal. So those are my only two finished objects. If you remember, I was supposed to have a third one, but it's not finished. But I made progress, which I will absolutely count. My Baby Branches sweater, I got it steamed. If you remember last week, my sleeves were like a rolled to be mess and now they're minimally rolling sleeves <laughs> so I did get it steamed and even the the sweater itself looks so much better I didn't steam the inside because I'm gonna I'm going to wet block it after I uh, after I get it seamed so I only steamed where I needed to seam <laughs> but um I, it's so much better so much it'll be so much easier to line everything up and to be able to see it and and just one more time there's the cute tree on the back um and this is the baby branches by Alana Dacos and this is knit in Barocco vintage DK in the colorway smoke so this I should I am going to focus on absolutely getting this fully finished seamed up and wet blocked for next week so um i'm really excited about that i'm proud that i made the progress i did on it um the area i had set up for blocking turned out to be way too small to do the whole sweater at once so i had to do the back and one sleeve one day and then the front and the other sleeve the other day and that's part of why i um didn't get it seamed up either so um so i'm still counting that as a work in progress um it should be done next week. Um, the next two things I was I've been working on. Um, this is my hat for the in the round class at Joanne. Uh, that's the lime brand wool ease thick and quick in the colors black and fisherman. Um, I have finished the color work. Um, I mentioned last week that I was having trouble because the color work was sucking in a lot. So I went up to like the hats knit on 11. So I went up to 13s for the color work and it's still too small to fit on my head, but it'll be fine for a class sample and it might fit on somebody else's head just fine. Um, I tend to have a larger lady's head. I think I'm like 23 and a quarter inches around. So I have a bigger head. Um, so that could be part of the problem. Um, uh, and it does, it looks a lot better before it totally, it like sucked in where the color work was and it's not doing that now. So I feel a lot better about that. I don't know if I need to try like increasing my stitches in here somewhere or, um, if I need to go up to 15s maybe for the color work section, just to keep it loose enough and give it enough stretch. Um, I'm not sure. And it, I don't know if it'd wash, like it'd block stretchier. I may have to try that. Anyway, I'm going to finish this. So this will be done for next week as well. Um, like I said, all I have to do is, I think I have an inch of the cream to knit and then the crown decreases. So um, that won't take too long to get finished. This is fat yarn on fat needles. So um, that should be done next week also. My last yarny work in progress that I made progress on is my For Your Fade Shawl by Andrea Mowry. This yarn bag's not gonna want to stay on my lap. So, the progress keeper is where I was last time, just before the eyelet rows. Um, the eyelet rows really slow me down. I have to pay attention to those. Um, otherwise, you're pretty much garter. You have some increasing and decreasing on either side, but um, for the most part, you're the most of the round is garter. So, those go pretty quick. But the eyelets, I have to actually focus, and I need to do the whole guard or the whole eyelet row so I know where I'm at um, in the pattern and ideally because after 
you do the eyelet row, you have to kind of knit back on the eyelet row and I guess pick up the eyelet, like the yarn overs and stuff. And that I have to pay attention to when I'm knitting. And actually the next whole garter ridge after that, kind of, you have to pay attention to also because it's a little, like the stitches are a little loosey-goosey from the yarn overs. It works out fine and it looks fine. It's just, that's me personally, something I have to do. So now I should be cruising for the next uh, garter section. So I'm really pleased with how this yarn is working up. It is so bright and fun and cheery. And um, so I'm excited to make more progress on this. This is just kind of going to be my as I go knit. I think like when I have a few minutes, like when we put the baby to bed and I have some time to knit at night. Um, the yarns I've got are um, the first one, my light colored base is uh, Hummingbird Moon. Uh, Over the Moon Sock Yarn, it's an 80-20 merino nylon fingering weight, uh, and it's which tits out of the broom closet. And then my super fun bright color is Honeybee Knits in her... Uh, it's also an 80-20. I picked them all to be 80-20s. Um, and this is her, if I want exposure, I'll get my tits out B positive colorway. <clears throat> um, and just kind of a note, I guess I'll put it in there. The Hummingbird Moon yarn was quite a bit thicker than the uh, Honeybee Knits yarn. So I started, as the pattern recommended, on a size 4 needle. And for the Hummingbird Moon, I've gone up to a size 5. When I was doing the fading, I could really feel that this that the Honey Bee, knit, Honey Bee Knits yarn was um, kind of stretching a little bit, I guess. is And it's probably a me thing. I don't know if it's my tension or what. But um, it was just working up a little bit finer than the other. So I just went up a needle size to try to keep them the same. And then I'll see how the final yarn plays in to see if I stay on the 5s or if I go back down to the 4s when it comes time to work that one in. So, um, I haven't even thought about that. I haven't messed with my last yarn and my last yarn color is Witch Candy Yarns. Okay. Yeah, Witch Candy Candied Yarn. And hers is an 80-20 and it's Witch's Tit. And it is this beautiful, well, they're all beautiful. Or I wouldn't have chosen them. <laughs> but it's this really fun black. I'm excited to get to that. Um, now I've just got like, when I was doing this section, it was like, oh, how many do I have to get before I fade? So now I'm going to be doing that again and let's get another section in. So, um, and my progress keeper and my stitch markers, I've got these marked every 20 stitches just so that I don't have to count every single time. They came from the Tits Out Collective too. Let me see if my tag's in the bag. Just one sec. Oh, it is. Let's see, these came from Howling Hills Studio, which is Heather Sampson. And there's her information. It is, I must have found her on Etsy, Howling, H-O-W-L-I-N-G, Hills Studio. Um, and she made these fun, and this was part of the Tits Out Collective as well. So that's the stitch marker. It's almost like, I, I'm not sure if it is, but it feels almost like it could be that shrinky dink material. So it's really, really like a lightweight, plasticky kind of, but it's really cute with the yarn thing. And then the colors of the Tits Out Collective are what all the little beads are on the stitch markers. So that's fun. I bought those intentionally to go with it. <laughs> <clears throat> So that is my For Your Fade Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And hopefully we'll have a little bit more progress on that. That's going to be kind of a long-term project. This is also on my Make 9. Um, I know it was a work in progress starting this year, or before 2019, but I am okay with that being on my Make 9. Getting it done will be a huge um, accomplishment for me. So um, I'm pleased with that. Um, on to the sewing. Um... Let's see. I guess we'll show this first because this is what's on top. Uh, my quilt binding. I 
got started and I've done there and over half of another side. So I'm almost to the other corner. So I'd say I almost got a quarter of it done. Um, this has kind of been my hand project after I finished my beeswax hat. This has kind of been what I've been working on. Um, if Tabitha is playing on the floor, I can sit on the couch and just, you know, do a few stitches here and there and it's not that big of a deal. So, um, this, I think will still be another couple weeks before it's all the way finished, but we shall see. Um, uh, no guarantees, but, um, I'm making progress, which is what I wanted was to make progress and I am. And so we'll see more progress next week. And I had wanted to have Tabitha's poncho finished this week and it didn't happen. Um, when I was at my mom's on Sunday, uh, I got the hood finished and attached to the poncho. So here we go. There's the poncho. I don't know how much you guys can see. So, and we have a cute little hood. I got the hood, the slope of the hood fixed. It's actually almost a little like, not the smoothest slope, but that's okay. Um, it's still really cute. And, um, I got it attached to the poncho, which was, uh, not the easiest feat because I wanted no seams. It's completely, it's going to be reversible. Although I don't see me using the yellow side, it could be reversible. Um, so I need to add ribbons. I want to add ribbons to the bottom and I'm just going to stitch it closed. I'm not going to like actually hem it or anything. So I'm going to tack the ribbons to the underside and then do a stitching over both pieces together. So you can kind of see I've got it pinned so that it's ready to go. And from my mom's stash, I have a whole bunch of a whole bag full of different colored ribbons. So I just need to go through and cut some pieces and figure out how many I need to go around. Uh, these are all satin ribbons and I think they vary from there's probably three quarter inch to like one and a quarter inch wide if that's even that wide. So not super wide ribbons but um, just something for her to play with when she's in her car seat. So this will be done next week. This will be done next week. <laughs> I really want to get that done. Um, and then finally, last category is my paper crafting. And I have a finished object there. I finished my mom's traveler's notebook. So this is the placemat. And I don't even know if I said these are mine and this one. These are placemats I got from the dollar store. So um, this was a very inexpensive project to do. This elastic, um, the pack cost me like three or four dollars from the craft store with the coupon. Um, there's the back, there's the front. So it really wasn't, and the same pack of elastic did hers and mine. So you can get two out of it. I have a little bit left over, um, but not enough to do a whole nother one. So, um, and I gave her some cute folders. I gave her two folders with the papers. So they're just double-sided 12 by 12 papers that I've made into the folders following um, Mamie's tutorial, like I mentioned last time. And then there's that one. I thought these were really pretty. I thought the inspirational quotes would be cute. Um, this paper pack is Copper Luxury by Die Cuts with a View. So, and the first one says, it's the little things in life. And the second one says, Every day may not be good, but there is something good in every day. So I just thought hers is just kind of a to-do list, like keepery kind of thing. So I just thought those were kind of fun. I thought those were really pretty. I think she'll really enjoy the colors and the papers. She loves succulents. So I really liked that. And, um, so that will be going to my mom tomorrow when we go over there. Um, so I'm really pleased that I got that done. That was kind of under the wire. It doesn't, it takes a little bit longer than I think it will take, but it's really not that long of a project. So, um, it's pretty exciting for me to get that done. Uh, last week I had talked about the thank you cards from my baby shower that I really wanted to make and I didn't touch those at all. And that really stressed me out. And I have made the judicious decision that I am going to go buy thank you cards and send them out. Um, because I'd waited so long to send them out, I felt really guilty not hand making them. Like that should be my excuse for why it took me so long to send them out, which it, it is my excuse. Although I shouldn't have one or need one, I guess. Um, but 
thank you is a thank you. Gratitude is gratitude. And people won't look at it and think, oh, she didn't make this card. What a slacker. So I'm going to go this week and buy thank you cards and get those uh, written out and sent in the mail because that will, it will get that weight off my shoulders and um, I can thank the people who gave us things and we got a lot of things and we were very, very, very blessed with our baby shower. So um, I want to make sure they know that I appreciate everything they've done for, you know, everything they did for us and um, that we've used everything well. I won't say everything because she hasn't, she doesn't fit into all the clothes yet because <laughs> she's tiny. So she hasn't fit into all the clothes, but we plan on using everything. Um, so that's kind of off the list. It's just a non-issue. Um, I also did not get anything done with getting her pictures printed. I'm not sure why. I just, I kind of looked at what I wanted to do and just didn't get around to getting it done. So I will get that done this week as well. Um, I, it's important to me to get her first year album done. Um, and we have so many pictures and she, so many cute pictures and even just looking back at how tiny she was when she was born is so fun. But I mean, we can only do that on our phones, just my boyfriend and I. So I want everybody to be able to experience my cute baby and see how tiny she was and whatnot. So, um, I'm definitely going to get on that, um, at least get the process started. I'm pretty sure it's like anything else. You know, the first ones I send over will kind of be like, oh goodness, you know, figuring everything out, how to make it work and um, whatnot. And then after that, it'll probably be boom, boom, boom. And also like where I haven't scrapbooked a whole lot um, and I've never done this Project Life pocket scrapbooking before. I think I'm a little intimidated by that. So I just need to bust it open and do it. And it'll probably be so quick and easy. And you know, just like most things in life, I'll be thinking, why didn't I do this sooner? This is so awesome. <laughs> so um, I'm aware that I just need to kind of get over that mental hurdle and just do it. So um, I'm going to. Um, that's all of the projects I have to show you right now. I didn't, I write down my project notes. I wrote them down last night trying to kind of, or my show notes, trying to kind of hope I would be in order and I'm still not. So we're going to try a new kind of process for that this next week where I kind of keep notes for the week and then I can assemble them into kind of an outline or a train of consciousness. Is that what that's called? I don't even know. Anyway, make it so that I'm not squeezing little notes in here and there because I forgot to mention in my yarniness that I need to make, um, there's, I have a sock class in at Joann's in uh, April, not April, May, March and April. And so I need to get the samples for that done. So th I will get those done this week. Um, that is on the agenda. So I want to get that hat finished and I need to get those done. And they have a block of the month program and I have my first four blocks done. I just need to get them blocked so that they're the proper size. So I will get that done because I am supposed to have all those things over to the store next weekend, I believe. So um, I will be getting those done this week. Um, also on my agenda to get done, um, you guys are not getting or going to see the extent of stuff that's in my craft room. Um, part of the reason I started this podcast is because I am a notorious starter and not a great finisher. So I have a lot of partial, partially completed projects. Like they're all around me. I have tote bags. There's probably... 10 tote bags around me. There are easily 12 totes, like bins, like 18 gallon bins of stuff. I have drawers, shelves, cubbies, it's everywhere. So one of my goals for this year, kind of in general, which goes along with my crafty goals, was to empty one thing a month. Um, my thing for January was I had a bin of we had thrown all the Christmas gifts in a bin in here because that makes a lot of sense right but you know you're kind of busy from Christmas you oh the, everything's awesome you stick it in a bin and it went under my ironing board so I got that out of here and got that taken care of even though that was a new edition not like an old edition but that's fine um the other so for February another thing 
I guess you could call it, I have is I have for a long time I've wanted to make money doing something crafty. So I come up with ideas of things I can make to sell and then I don't sell them. So I have decided that this year I'm going to sell those things. I need to either sell them or give them away or something because I have, you know, some of these, some of that, various things. And some of them aren't even finished. So I just, my, for February, my um, goal item is going to be, I have, it's right here, this laundry basket of shawls, or uh, scarves. That's, sorry, not the shawls, scarves. These are those ruffle scarves. They were really popular a while ago, but they're still really cute. And um, I've given them to my family as gifts. My sister still gives them as gifts. Um, she'll have me make her some. And um, my family still wears them. So this, these are all, they're, they're done. I have many, many different like kinds and types and they're knitted. However, the ends aren't sewn in. So they're not finished, finished. See, he's got a, he's got an end just hanging out there. And I use a uh, sewing thread and I tuck them in. And same with the roughly ones. That end's done, the other end's not done. So my goal for this month is to get these done. And then because they've been sitting in this basket for a while, um, I'm going to need to probably give them a little bit of a steaming and hang them out. And then I will get pictures and get them up for sale or figure out how to store them in a way that they won't be um, so squished and I can try and sell them next year if it's if the weather warms up or whatever and it's too late but I want to get this basket full of almost finished scarves out of my room so that's a month-long goal so I guess I should have progress next week <laughs> um, some progress I think um, where I have to get those samples done for classes I don't know those would come before this, so it may not be right away. And um, the other thing I really want to do is behind my bins, I have a futon and it's been a catch all. It is completely full of stuff and I need to get it cleaned off. Um, so I know for a fact that there are three blankets on that futon that need, two of them need repair. One of them needs binding put on it. So, um, I would like to also get those done this month. Um, just kind of at some point get them taken care of so they can get off the futon because that's not where they belong. I'm going to say clearly, but that is not where they belong. And that'll go make a dent. I won't even say it won't even help a ton and that's fine. Um, but it will get those out of there and maybe I can get a better handle on what else is on there so I can um, finish getting it taken care of. I feel like I've just been kind of piling things up for so long that it's all catching up to me right now. Um, and I just, I just want to, I want to finish things. I want to accomplish things. That's my word of the year is accomplish. And that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking to you guys. That's why I'm sharing with whoever will listen. Um, it has done really well this week on kind of keeping my crafty goals on the forefront of my mind. Um, it does keep me on task. Like at night when Tabitha goes to bed, I'm not just like, oh, I'll just pick up this shawl and knit on it. It's, I've got other things that need to be done or that I really want to get finished. So it's not just a matter of, um, picking up whatever and just working on it and, or starting something new and forgetting about my other things. Um, the other thing it's also done is you put, ta I, or you, I put Tabitha down for a nap and I don't instantly just go out and want to sit in it. I make a conscious decision that I need to get these, this and this chores done so that I can sit in it or so that I can work on something else. Excuse me. Um, so I've really been doing a lot better with um, keeping up with my housework and stuff too because I want to get those things done so I can sit down and do my crafting. Um, since Tabitha has been born, I've been really kind of focusing on the yarny stuff just because it's small, it's portable, it's something I can do in the living room while she's there and not have to worry about it. So I haven't really been in my craft room a lot to do a lot of paper crafting or sewing. And I'm excited to change that. Um, there's no reason I can't be in here when she's down for a nap or when my boyfriend comes home at night or whatever. Um, so I've, I, I've, I'm feeling a lot better about the way things are going. I'm feeling more productive all over. So I really feel like this is helping me. Um, so I hope it, some of you enjoy it. I'm not sure. And if not, then 
it works for me. It helps me to keep myself accountable, which is the point of it. So, um, I did have a little bit of a haul this week. I went shopping. I needed to go get, well, needed, needed is a strong word, but I wanted to get yarn from Joanne for, for those, the Magic Yarn Project charity hats. I did get mine sent off this week, so I'm waiting to hear the feedback before I start my next batch. Um, but I did buy the yarn for them, so, and I bought some fabric. So let's, I'll show you what I bought. They are still in the bags, and this one I want to leave in, well, I'll put it back in the bag after. Goodness. But I've got to show you, I'm going to be making me a dress. Um, I don't know that I, I have the pattern, but I think I have too small of a pattern, so I think I need to buy a bigger size and it's out of print, so I'm going to have to get it off of Etsy. Um, but I bought this beautiful purple satin. I don't know if that, it looks like the color's coming across true. It's beautiful. It's called Blackberry Wine is the colorway. So I think that is going to be a beautiful, purple is my favorite color. So I think it's going to be a beautiful dress for me. I'm very excited about that. And we'll talk more about that when it comes time to start making it or working on it or whatever. Right now I just... The fabric was on sale. I had a off your total purchase uh, discount because I'm an instructor. So it was a really good deal. I paid $45 for that fabric to make me a formal dress. So there's no way you can buy a dress for that price. Um, the other fabric I bought, I did not need. And there were small bits on, well not small bits, there were not a lot left on the bolt. So I bought more than I even had planned on getting, but it's Beauty and the Beast fabric. Beauty and the Beast is my absolute favorite. And this says, Be Our Guest. And I loved it. And kind of to go with it, I guess, I found they had this fabric. And I love this too. So my thought in getting this is that I would like to make myself a project bag out of it. I have enough to make like 10 project bags, so we'll see. Um, I kind of have a little... Um, I made a project bag following the, it was, uh, in a pickle knitting, I think is her name. Um, she did a bag tutorial, a drawstring bag tutorial, and I really enjoy the construction of that bag. And so I had made one and then I participated in the project bag swap. And so I made the bag for the swap and I had a lot of fun doing that. So there are several other, pa I've got a few other patterns I want to kind of look at and see what I like, but, um. I think I might want to get into making project bags. I love to sew. I love project bags. And if nothing else, I love project bags. And I have a really, and there are makers out there that I love and that I will buy from because it's something I can't make. But a basic bag, I can make myself. I can make myself a drawstring bag. I'll have to pull mine out. And I've actually never even used the one I made for myself. So I need to get it out and get it in use for one thing. Um, <clears throat> and, um, Anyway, so if I can't make it, if I can make it myself, then I'm not going to buy one. But there are bags out there that I can't make myself or that I don't want to make myself. And so those I will still buy from other makers. I'm not like, you know, an elitist or anything, but so, like most other things, if I, well, and if I have the time, I guess. Well, anyway, so that's what I bought these for was to make project bags for myself, just for myself, because I love Beauty and the Beast. It's my favorite. So I treated myself. And the rest of this is yarn. And I bought quite a bit, but there are several hats I want to make. And I bought enough to make more than the hats I need to. So it's all Karen Simply Soft. And my red label broke. But I have a red, a black, and a white for Mickey Mouse hats. And then, and the white's going for, it will be going for several of them. So, and then I got a black and a pink and the white for mini hats, mini mouse hats. Um, based on the full beanie, I can get three beanies out of one skein of yarn. I'm planning to do two of each for the event they have coming up in March um, here locally. So I pretty much, I bought a skein for the two hats just to make sure that I had enough. Um, I won't necessarily use it that way, but um, that was kind of my thinking in it. So those are for mini mouse hats and then um, they got all the, they at least have signups for all of the plain beanies that they need for, um, somebody made the logos for them. So they just needed beanies to go with the logos. 
<coughs> excuse me, I don't have a drink today. And they have plenty of those. So, um, I was going to make more just plain beanies, but since they don't need those, I won't be making those. But the last ones I got were for, are for, um, they had, it's royal blue and blue mint. And they are for PJ Masks Cat Boy. And nobody has signed up for those yet. So I thought I would make a couple of those to kind of go. Um, plus, and this isn't selfish at all, the patterns aren't like their own patterns. They're patterns that people have made that they get permission to use, like that work for their needs. And so they link you to the people's blog patterns and stuff. They are free patterns. Plus I have a nephew who's, he's actually my great nephew. He's five and he loves PJ Masks. So my thought kind of was... If I'm making PJ Masks cats, I can make him one too. So, um, that's all I bought at Joann's. That's all. Way more than I needed to. If you saw how much... They make those, like, memes or cartoons or whatever that... You just don't have the right type or color or whatever of yarn in all the yarn that's around you. <laughs> it's a fact. It's a thing. Um, so I think that's all I have for this week. I'm still feel like I'm scattered and all over the place and unorganized and unprofessional and whatnot, but I'm here again. So I'm very proud of myself that I recorded again and I'm hoping to come back every week. I, like I said, it was, it's been a really good influence on me this week. Um, so hopefully I can keep going and I'm apologize if that glare on my glasses is bothering you. It might be my light. I may need to turn that off. I'm not sure. Um, I'm surprised I'm getting as good a light as I'm getting. It's a very gloomy day, but I guess my window is super bright. So apparently that's, apparently that's fine. So, um, uh, I think that's all. Um, I look forward to hearing from all of you guys. If you have any questions or comments or anything, um, leave them down below and, um, I will try to link to everything I've mentioned possibly more than I mentioned if I forgot to mention some things. <laughs> um, and I guess until next time, have a rosy ray day. Bye.